Oh yeah. Uh, uh, feels good. Feels good. Hey yo, what's up? It's your girl Songbird. It's Dante Black. And we're back for another episode of your favorite internet, internet show. Polar Opposites, the Melanin Edition. Alright, so if this is your first time tuning in, what's up? Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you hit that like, that subscribe, and the notification bell. Just hit it one time so that you're notified every time a new episode of Polar Opposites, the Melanin Edition, pops up. And for our returning opposite fam, what's up, y'all? What they do, one time for the one time. Okay, yeah. Alright, so let's get into today's topic. What is your breaking point in a relationship? And what we mean by breaking point is what is the last thing you will deal with? Like, okay, you've been doing this over and over and over and over. Now you done did this one thing. It's like the straw that broke the camel's back. Like, I got to be done before just I completely blow up at you and this goes all the way back. So what would be your breaking point in a relationship? You mine, mine is finances. That is my breaking point. If... You mess up my money. You steal my money. You hinder me from making money. Um, you're supposed to pay a bill and you don't pay it. So now I have to use other money. I got to basically rob from Peter to pay Paul type situation. That that was my breaking point. I, I can't deal with that. I can I can deal with a lot of stuff. Lying hmm, doesn't, doesn't really matter to me. Um, cheating that bothers me but understand you cheat on me I'm a dog your ass out that's just how it is you better not never let me find out you never never I promise you I'm gonna do whatever you did to me 10 times worse and you may or may not find out about it and then I'll stay with you just so I can inflict more pain um you don't clean up. That's I, I would say that's that's number two on my break. Yeah, I can't do mess. I can't do messy. I can't do hoarding. I can't hoarding whatever that word is called. Hoarding. Yeah, hoarding. I can't do that. Uh, I can't do body odor. Yeah, that cleanliness thing. Yeah, you mess with my money. You ain't clean. You don't clean up. Oh yeah, you got to go. Those, that's my breaking point in the relationship. What's yours? Um, I think I'm gonna have to go with my Auntie Wendy on this one. Um, that having a baby outside the relationship, yeah, no, nah, that's that's grounds for me having to go. Like, that already means that you were cheating. No, and with the baby coming, that means you were lying, and now you done brought a whole nother life into this life. So it's like you don't need me anymore. You got a whole nother family over there. You need to go tend to. So yeah, all right. Can I interject? What? Why? And I, I'm just asking because I'm curious. Why do females always associate a guy having a baby with somebody else as their a family? But when a female has a baby with another male, y'all never say, "Hey, hey, little mama, go with your family." It's always the dude, "Hey, you got a baby over there with her? That's your family." But it's never the same thing said when a female has the baby and. The father that you never tell her, hey, here, here's your baby, go over there with your family. Why well, is that? It should be. There shouldn't be a reason for that. If, if the girl cheats with another dude and gets pregnant by another dude, her, the man that she's dating and lying to, that's the one who needs to tell her, okay, well, you know what? You wanted this dude. You don't want to. Have, you don't want to get pregnant by this dude. You go be with him. That's your family now. I I probably won't break up with her if she gets pregnant by somebody else because. For the whole, for the entire nine months. I, well, I, 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 let me rephrase that. I won't break up with her while she's pregnant. I won't. Because I'm King Petty, in case y'all didn't know. So for the next nine months while you're pregnant, I'm going to do everything you've always wanted to do. Everything you always told me you wanted to do, I'm going to go everywhere you always wanted to go. Oh, I want to go to Puerto Rico. Oh, I want to go to D.C. I want to go to Vegas. I want to do... I'm going everywhere within those nine months. And I'm going to do everything you always want to do, but you can't go because you're pregnant. And I'm going to 
aggravate you every day. Not to the point where you lose the baby, but I, you've ever heard that saying that whoever she argues with or whoever she had a problem with, like. I want it to be his baby, but I want it to look like me. And as soon as you have the baby, we're going to break up. No, it, it, in that situation, it would have to be on the woman. Like, I already know that I done messed up. I'm going to go ahead and just be a woman about the whole situation since it's all out in the open. Now, I'm going to go ahead and leave. But that never really happens. That never really happens. Well, like I've always said, guys, I'm, a, I'm cut from a different cloth. So, yeah. If that situation were to happen to me, which it will not, I just go. I just leave. I already know I done messed up. And if you already know the type of person you're dealing with, could potentially be something like this person here. <laughs> you might as well just save yourself some heartache and go ahead and bow out gracefully. Oh, because if you stay, <laughs> oh, it's going to be a lot of heartache for you. Exactly. Because you don't need that stress on you or your unborn child. Yeah, I mean, this may sound, this may sound rude or disrespectful, but that ain't my baby. That is not my concern. So that, that is exactly why that person would not care. I'm not going to give two fucks. Just like you didn't give a fuck about going to fuck somebody else unprotected and then possibly bringing uh, uh, another child and the STD back to me. You didn't care? I'm not going to care. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't trying to give, tell nobody to go out and cheat. But if you are going to step out, use protection, guys. Or just don't step out. Don't put yourself at risk for that karma to come back. Because here's the thing. Whatever you're doing, karma is going to come back. And it's not going to come back in a way that you can deal with it. It's going to come back slightly in the way that it's going to possibly either break you or slightly break you. But you're going to know when karma comes back because it's going to hit you like a ton of bricks. So all of that, oh, I'm sliding. I got this little buddy over here. I got this little buddy over there. Oh, he paid for my nails. And he paid for my this. And he paid that. Oh, and I got a little so-and-so when I'm hungry. He work at Chick-fil-A. And so he always give me them free sandwiches on the low. You, all of that's going to come back. All that's going to come back to you. It's going to hit you hard. So if you don't want all of that stuff you're doing to come back on you, then don't do it. But if you willing to say, you know what, I know karma's gonna come. Fuck it, let's ride. All right, so what's you guys' take on this? What's your breaking point in a relationship? Is it the lying, is it the cheating? Is it the stepping out and having babies and making and with another person? Don't mess with my money. Clean the money. fuck up. My money, don't mess with my coin, don't mess with these bills. And clean up. If you ain't washing dishes, floors, or ass, or vagina, we have no conversation. Alright guys, leave us a comment down below and tell us what you think. Songbird. Dante Wright. Chill to the next episode. New levels bring new devils. Never let it turn you devil. Call and play so the team win. Coach K to my blue devils. They was transporters like Jason Stater. Now they ball like Jason Tatum. My